Hello! In this video, we will cover the assembly and operation of the 3D Potter Continuous Cement Mixing Station. We will first unbundle the power cable. The mixer requires a 240 volt 20 amp power service. The plug on the power cord is a NEMA 6 50, but you can use an adapter plug to have it work with your existing electrical outlet. Please double check with your maintenance team when using adapters. Next, take off the water chilling coil. This coil will be used to cool down the temperature of the water being used by the mixer. Underneath the machine is the mixing chamber. The mixing chamber has the mixing blade inside of it. The mixing blade has three paddles on the end. These three paddles need to be on the output side of the chamber. Also on the end of the mixing chamber is the bearing carrier and the blade stabilizer. It is possible that these parts have fallen out during the shipping process this is normal as these parts are intended to move in place during normal operation. You can put them back into place, or if you are having trouble doing so, you can open the end of the mixing chamber. You will need a 6mm hex bit to undo the four securing screws. Here is a close-up of the bearing carrier and the blade stabilizer. Here is what they look like separated. If yours are currently not in place, insert the blade stabilizer first, then insert the bearing carrier. If you are having trouble doing so, slightly rotate the bearing carrier when inserting it. There is a grease fitting on the front. A small amount of grease should be added about every four uses of the machine. You should also partially disassemble the end of the mixing chamber, the same way as it was shown on how to insert the bearing carrier and blade stabilizer. Make sure that there is no debris underneath the bearing carrier. Again, this should be done about every four uses of the machine. When putting the end of the mixing chamber back on, make sure that the handle is on the opposite side of the material output. Start the bolts in by hand and then tighten in a cross bolt pattern. Insert the mixing blade with the three paddles on the output side. Align the mixing blade to be inserted into the machine. Push the mixing chamber into the machine. You can use small movements as shown here to help fully insert it. The mixing chamber must be fully inserted. There should be no gap between the mixing chamber and the machine. When putting on and tightening the securing clamp, make sure that there is no gap. You can continue to make small movements with the mixing chamber while tightening the clamp to make sure of this. The last assembly step is to attach the water pump output. This can easily be done by sliding the water hose into the output of the water pump. The machine is now fully assembled and ready for use. We will now go over the operation of the cement mixing station. The main steps we will be covering are setting the water pressure, turning on the machine, setting the correct motor speeds, and cleaning the machine. To start, connect a water hose to the input. Before setting the water pressure, the water system needs to be primed. We will first be setting the water pressure between 10 and 20 psi while priming the system. Turn the main power switch and the top panel on, and then turn on the water pump. It may take up to two minutes for the line to prime. You can increase the water pump speed to speed up this process. To set the water pressure, turn on the water pump for about two seconds, and then shut it off. Wait for the pressure on the gauge to equalize before adjusting it. It is very important that the pressure gauge reads 20 PSI after you have turned off the water pump. Here we are slowly increasing the pressure. You must turn the water pump on and off after each adjustment to get an accurate reading on the pressure gauge. When the water pressure is correct and you turn on the water pump, the gauge will fluctuate slightly. This is normal operation. As an option, you can use an inline water cooler. Here we are using a bucket of water filled with ice. Depending on your material and the temperature of the weather, water cooling may be needed. For a two-part cement which uses accelerant injection, such as Sika cement, 
Cooling down the water increases the window of time you have to work with the material. With the water system primed and the pressure set to 20 PSI, we can now attach the water hose to the mixing chamber and start the system. We want to set the mixer to 2000 RPM. Turn the switch to auto and then turn the speed knob up until the display is close to 2000. It is acceptable as long as it is within plus or minus 100 RPM. Once up to speed, turn on the water and wait until it is coming out. You can then turn on the hopper agitator and the cement powder motor. These numbers represent the motor RPM. You should start with the water set to a higher setting and then bring it back down to your desired amount. For Sika 752 cement being used as a 2K material, we have the water set to 235 and the powder set to 130. It can take up to two minutes for cement of a consistent water mixture ratio to come out. The cement shown here has an ideal amount of water content to be used with an accelerant injection system. For a one-part cement that does not use accelerant injection, you need to reduce the water content. Here we are reducing the water amount to 150 RPM, and we are not changing the powder amount. After making changes to the water or powder motor speed, it can take up to one minute to see changes in the material coming out. The material that is coming out now is ideal for printing as a one-part cement with no accelerant. Now we are going to show how to pause the mixer. Please note, you cannot pause indefinitely when using cement with mixed-in accelerants. You can only pause for a maximum of 10 minutes. If you pause for more than 10 minutes and you are using Sika 752 or Sika 733, you must stop and clean the machine. To pause the machine, press the red stop button on the motor controllers and flip the mixer switch to the middle position. When you are pausing for the first time or shutting the machine off, you will want to save the numbers that are on the display. These are saved on the motor controllers, but you should also write them down. Saving these settings will help you the next time you want to start the mixer and provide a good starting point to get started for the workday. To save the setting to the controller, press the Enter key when it is off. You cannot save the motor speed setting when the motors are on. To resume mixing, change the switch to auto and hit the three green run buttons. It is very important to turn on the mixing chamber first before hitting the green run buttons. Otherwise, a blockage can occur in the powder feed system. Now we will go over how to clean the machine. Cleaning must be performed when you are done mixing material. To start the cleaning process, turn off the powder feed and the hopper agitator. Then, turn up the water speed to at least 700. Let the machine run for at least one minute, or until there is nearly no cement and only water coming out. Turn off the water and mixer. For safety, always turn off the main power switch before removing parts from the machine. Disconnect the water hose from the mixing chamber and undo the securing clamp. Make sure to not lose the clamp. Pull off the mixing chamber. If there is resistance, you can use small back and forth movements to pull it off as shown here. Grab onto the mixing paddles and pull them off with the chamber if needed. On the inside of the mixing chamber, at the end where the cement comes out, there is a bearing carrier and a blade stabilizer which is inside of it. These parts may come loose when removing the mixing blade. Take out the mixing blade. There should be a minimal amount of material on the blades. Use a water source to clean the blades. The material should come off easily. You can also use a pressure washer to clean the blades if one is available. Make sure the bearing carrier and the blade stabilizer are clean. If they are still inside the mixing chamber, they can remain there for about every four uses of the machine until they need to be taken out and thoroughly cleaned. Wash the inside of the mixing chamber until all material is removed. 
There can be small pockets of material at the end of the mixing chamber. Make sure they are cleaned out. Make sure that the water inlet hole is not blocked with material. This has covered the assembly and operation of 3D Potter's continuous cement mixing station. Thank you for watching. For more information on our complete solution for 3D cement printing, please visit our website.